peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord and good morning on this beautiful Sunday in October. Let us pray. Open our eyes, Lord. Help us to see Jesus as he reaches out to heal our blindness. Help us to let go of all those things that keep us in darkness. This day, as your word is proclaimed, let our hearts and souls respond with joy. Transform and reform our lives to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our call to worship is responsive. Follow along with me. Welcome today to a service of reformation. Change is our constant companion. What does God have in store for us? God seeks to form our lives anew as lives of love and service. We are ready to hear God's word and do God's will. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts to God's awesome love. Come, O Lord, and transform our lives. Amen.
us pray. Holy Father, creator of all things, we come to you with open hearts, illuminate us in this moment, and revive in us a love and dedication to fulfilling your will through the reading of your word. Our scripture reading today comes from the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. The divine name revealed. Hear the word. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is, and spirit happens in, around, through, and between us. A guest pastor is standing in the pulpit of a small town church, about to lead worship as parishioners struggle with the news of their regular pastor in the hospital, having had a heart attack the Sunday before. At the beginning of the service, a member announces that their pastor is still in an induced coma and that it is still unclear what the damage has been done. We pray for him and his family. The pastor is moved by the emotion in the sanctuary. One woman talks at length about how the pastor has been helping her with her brain problems. Her husband looks on, anxiety on his face, as his wife repeats herself. Another parishioner stands to speak, tears in her eyes. Then another. It is clear that they love him and that they are showing it in the steadfastness, the hopefulness that they bring to worship that day. As the guest pastor listens and watches, he sees something that he's often seen in small churches. He sees it in the lined faces of the people, often older, years of shared living and faith holding them together. It is in the way they greet each other when passing the peace, a noble handshake, a modest embrace. It is in their voices when they sing, often off-key, yet determined and joyful. It is in the creaking silence of prayer when the sanctuary itself seeks to speak. It is something that flows between them, that moves within them, that circulates around them. This morning, I'd like you to perhaps challenge your thoughts on what God is to you and explore the idea of God being a verb more than a noun and what that might mean for us as we walk through our lives in faith. Talking about God is a tricky thing. Scholars have argued over the nature of God for millennia. However, they tend to agree that all language about God is metaphor. God is like an old man with a long white beard. Or God is like a burning bush. Or God is like a mother hen who will bring her babies under her wing. I'm not sure human language can adequately capture or de define the divine, which is not human, but beyond human. Our scripture reading today captures the essence of who God is. God is not to be boxed up and neatly wrapped. The origin of God is as a verb and not a new one. Moses encounters a bush that burns continuously and discovers that the only name God will invite is that God is, I am who I am. The church fathers of the 13th century committed to the idea of God as action. Thomas Aquinas stated that God is pure act. The mystic Mechtild of Mechtenberg describes God as an overflow which never stands still and always flows effortlessly without ceasing. 
In a novel that was popular a few years ago and was made into a movie, The Shack by William P. Young, an Asian woman named Saryu, who is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, says to Mac, I will take a verb over a noun anytime. I am a verb. I am that I am. I will be who I will be. I am a verb. I am alive, dynamic, ever acting and moving. I am a being verb. The expression I am a verb is also used by 20th century philosopher R. Buckminster, Buckminster Fuller in one of his poems. Here is God's purpose. For God to me it seems is a verb, not a noun. Yes, God is a verb, the most active connoting the vast harmonic reordering of the universe from unleashed chaos of energy. From the first words of the Bible through to the last pages, they are full of God in action and as action. All creation is in motion. From the rotation of the neutrons, protons, and electrons that make up our atoms to the vast systems of outer space, nothing is still. Creation is action. Our holy book begins with action. In the beginning, God created. God swept over the face of the waters. God evoked the light. The light was separated from the darkness, and God separated the waters from the sky. One by one, atoms formed molecules, formed plants and trees and birds and animals, and finally humans. Spirit breathes life into Adam's lungs and puts his spirit into the universe. Saint Ignatius said that God labors for us continuously. The scriptures talk about a farmer planting a seed. He sleeps at night, is up and about during the day, and all the while the seeds are sprouting and growing. Yet he does not know it happens. Mark 4:27. The Spirit flows, infusing all living things with the light of God, and when all is completed, God rests. Even the act of resting is God. And when things are not working in human history, in our human story, God comes in by the Holy Spirit and reforms the ways in which we worship and praise Him. God reforms our views of relationship with God through the words and actions of those before us. God incarnates. A very active God incarnating means that God is in the midst of everything we think, say, and do, and relate with one another. The Word is made flesh and dwells among us. Christ dwells. The wind moves and we know not where it comes and where it goes. It is action. God is renewing itself in every moment, in every blossom that opens in the springtime, in every leaf that falls in an autumn moment, in every time reconciliation erupts and love wins, we are a witness to spirit as action. If we start thinking about God as a verb, maybe we'll start thinking of ourselves that way too. We are not photographs, one thing set in time. We are not the toddler in our big red snowsuit. We are not the string of school photos or the Christmas shots in a photo album. We are known by what we do. The fact that we breathe and drink water and birth babies makes us human. If we are to understand that we are made in the image of God, we need to understand that we are lives in motion. The Spirit of God is found in the act of forgiving. The Spirit of God is found in the act of loving. The Spirit of God is found in the act of grieving. Spirit flows from the embrace of one to another. Spirit flows from the kindness of a stranger. Spirit is in those actions. God is something that we participate in. The action we bring to the world to make love, justice, mercy, joy, and goodness known. God is love. And love finds a way. 
It pushes up in the cracks of the heart and society and tears down our assumptions. Love finds a way. Like lifelong LGBTQ couples who live lives of integrity and faithfulness in the face of cultural assumptions that devalue their love. This love forms alternate communities and economics as a pushback against these cultural injustices. This is why we tell the story of the resurrection. We tell a story of a love so great that it flows and overcomes all that we throw at it. A love that does not stand still. I don't know about you, but I know that in my own life, all too often I'm tempted to ask the question, where are you, God? I look around at the pain, the loss, and the hurt in our world, and even in my own life, and I can't help but wonder, God, don't you see this? Can't you do something about it? Where are you? And even when I can't see him or feel him, God is constantly on the move. The Spirit reminds me that no matter what I am going through, God, as a verb, is not just a spectator to everyone going on in our world. God is actively engaged, fully alive, and always involved. One of my favorite theologians, Bishop Shelby Spong's words, serve as a good conclusion. God is not a noun that demands to be defined. God is a verb that invites us to live, to love, and to be. Amen. Let us pray. God, of whom we live and move and have our being, help us to see you in a new way, as an ever-present, ever-changing action in our lives. Help us to realize that you are in that loving embrace, that act of kindness, that spirit of forgiveness. Help us to allow you to move through us as we bring your kingdom to a weary world. In Jesus' name, amen. God, we are growing weary 
of a world that forgets to love. A world where sometimes it seems that darkness is winning. Send your Holy Spirit to flow through this planet and heal all that ails us. Show us daily what we are more, that we are more alike than different. As we all sleep, eat, love, and grieve, give us a spirit of unity. Lord, we ask your forgiveness in our forgetfulness of your power in this world. You try to connect us with real and tangible ways, and we are often so occupied we tend to miss your actions in our lives. Spirit, we pray for those in positions of power. Help our leaders to put the needs of their nations first. Give them the wisdom to create your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and calm their volatile emotions and bring your hand on them to serve you always. Christ, you are incarnate within us. Guide us to renew our minds daily so that we may be open and ready for the new commands you require of us. Healing God, we look with compassion on those who are sick or plagued with pain and sorrow. We ask that you be with them as they face their difficulties. Give them comfort that you are with them in every moment. Lord, we ask you to bring healing as a sign of your grace to those we lift up to you now. God of justice, watch over this nation as we enter into the next two weeks. Help us to navigate relationships with people who don't feel the same way as us. Give us a respite from the anger and anxiety many of us feel. And let your justice reign for us all. Lord, guard our hearts and minds and those we hold dear. Continue to give us a spirit of love and service to you. Hear our devotion to you through the prayer your Son taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our sending forth comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Amen. Mm -hmm.